Hi, my name is Mike Duarte, and I'm an assistant pastor at Calvary Chapel Mountain View. And today I want to kind of talk with you about uh, what's been going on in the American Christian Church the past couple weeks. Uh, as you may not know, there are some churches that are planning on reopening their doors on May 31st in states that are still in quarantine or in mandatory uh, stay-at-home orders. And then since there's a dispute, there's also another side, and there's churches that uh, desire to comply with, with the government request to, to self-isolate. And while I'm not overly concerned about the fact that there's a disagreement within the church, because frankly, there's always disagreements within the church, uh, I am a little concerned about why there's a disagreement within the church on this particular issue. And it's not so much the fact that uh, some Christians believe that their religious liberties are being violated and some Christians believe that um, the government isn't trying to do that, but rather trying to protect people. Uh, the, what I'm concerned about is uh, why I think this is happening. Uh, typically, when we look at a disagreement within the church, it's it's typically very much theologically based. You know, uh, are you Arminianist or Calvinist? Are you uh, you know a pre-trib or post-trib or mid-trib guy? It's all based on uh, you know doctrinal issues that that weren't and frankly in the grand scheme of things, uh, rather minor doctrinal issues uh, in light of, of the theology that we have in common. Uh, this issue, however, I think while there is some doctrinal basis to it, and specifically, uh, it's, but I think specifically it's more to do with the application of, of theology and doctrine. And in this particular instance, it's uh, the doctrine, you know, or the, the theology and the understanding and the, what Christ has called the church and as Christians to do to uh, obey the authority that uh, God has placed over us, as long as it doesn't supplant the authority that God has in our lives. And uh, then on the other side, uh, the, um, you know, the, the requirements that the Bible puts forth for us as Christians to be in fellowship with one another, uh, to, um, to lay hands on one another, to minister to one another. And um, I'm going to set all that aside because at the core of, of this talk isn't about that. What, what it's about is why I think this is happening. And, and the reason why I think it's happening is because uh, Americans today are getting their, their news from everywhere. Uh, and that, that's not a bad thing per se, but the issue is, is that the quality of that news and the sources of that are increasingly becoming more and more biased uh, and polarizing. And so we as Americans are consuming our news, uh, specifically from news outlets that reinforce our views on things. Uh, if you're a conservative, you typically go to Fox News. If you're a liberal, you typically go to MSNBC uh, or you know CNN or, or whatever. Um, if you know if you uh, really want to find out the conservative truth about something, uh, you'll go you know I'm putting that in quotes. You'll go to some fringe you know conservative blog site. Uh, same with with people that are liberal. And the issue with this, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with MSNBC or Fox News for that matter, um, but I think it's pretty widely accepted that both of those news channels tend to cater to one end of the political spectrum or the other. Um, my concern is with the church today is that it increasingly seems like our worldview is being influenced by our political affiliation more than it is in regards to the word of God and what God has for us. Because uh, at the end of the day, no matter what end of the spectrum you're in, if you consider yourself a conservative liberal, there's nothing about that political party uh, that fully aligns with the Bible. Uh, now you might say, but but Pastor Mike or Mike, you know, like, but clearly, you know, the Republican Party is the party for Christians. You know, they stand for, for good Christian values. Um, and I would say, uh, yes, they, they stand for some Christian values. Um, and you know, as a social conservative myself, I, I'm aligned with uh, those things uh, that are, you know, anti-abortion and, and these, these kind of classic Christian conservative values and, and worldviews. Um, but I'm, I feel those, I think that way, not because the conservative party or my conservative news source tells me that these things are true. I think these ways because that's what the Bible tells me is true. Uh, I would also argue the same as for the liberal party. Um, and I would say that there are things within the liberal party that are godly values. Um, I would even argue that some economic policies within the Democratic Party and the intent behind them to help others who 
can't help themselves uh, to establish some sense of a safety net for folks. Uh, I'm not going to argue about, you know, like uh, how that's implemented, but the principles behind it, um, we can see all throughout the Bible. And, um, you know, whether that's the role of the government or the church, it's a whole other thing. But there's there's values and principles in both parties that are scripturally sound and grounded that I agree with. Again, not because the party or my news source tells me I should agree with them or feeds me knowledge to, to cater me to that viewpoint, but rather because that's what the Bible tells me. And I just want to encourage you all, fellow Christians, not to be swayed by the news, not to be swayed by the information that you read on the internet, but rather go to the word of God. Go to God in prayer and seeking out discernment and wisdom and how to discern the truth in this time of in this in this day and age. Um, I was reading uh, an article um, where a poll was conducted in New York City and um, trying. Excuse me, not New York City. This is nationwide poll, um, and they were trying to determine uh, like what how did people view the trustworthiness of certain officials. And so they uh, polled conservatives and a vast majority of conservatives believed everything, you know, things that Trump said were, were correct and truthful. Excuse me. Meanwhile, they polled Democrats and a vast majority of Democrats didn't believe anything that Trump said was truthful. Um, and then they asked about Dr. Fauci and a majority of conservatives um, didn't believe that Dr. Fauci was was truthful or was an authoritative source to listen to. Meanwhile, liberals overwhelmingly viewed Dr. Fauci as someone who was trustworthy. And what this tells me is that as Americans, no longer are we evaluating truth just for the truth's sake, but we're evaluating the facts based on what party we belong to. And as Christians, that's that's an error uh, because our identity is not in our political leanings. It's not whether I'm a conservative or a liberal but my identity is in Christ. And so we really need to be going to God for, for who we are and how we view the world and how we should vote and how we should decide what is right and wrong for the church to do. And my concern, particularly with the COVID-19 response of the churches, is that it seems to be more falling along party political party lines than it is necessarily around doctrinal issues of the church. And so as uh, you, my fellow Christian, uh, consume your information. Be prayerful about where you're consuming that information from. Uh, you know, look up that news source that you're looking at and, and see, um, you know, what does the general consensus seem to be and where does it fall within the spectrum? Does that mean you should stop watching Fox News? No. Maybe it means, though, you might want to counterbalance it with with some uh, some AP or, or uh, Reuters, which is uh, their, their, you know, neutral news sources. Their, their goal is not to add commentary, but just the straight news. Meanwhile, if you're a big fan of MSNBC, maybe counterbalance that or you know look into the same type of sources for, for a more neutral, more fact-driven approach. Um, but more importantly than all of that, go to the Word of God. Go to God himself and, and, and seek him out and have him show you um, what is truth. And, and more importantly, have him shape your worldview and your mind as to how you view things. And I honestly believe that as the church as a whole does this, that we as a church will become more unified and that we can show a way forward out of this crazy political divide, this ideological divide of clashing worldviews within our country under a single banner of Christ. And I think this answers a lot of the issues that we're have, seeing within the church today for the COVID-19 scenario as well. Um, one other thing I just want to note is... At first, when I was seeing this kind of some of this disunity in the response of our country as well as of our church, um, I was super bummed. Um, but then I started doing some research and start digging into some historical archives, and I realized that uh, during the Spanish flu pandemic uh, or the Spanish lady pandemic, there um, the way that churches responded and the way that our country responded was exactly the same. We had some churches that refused to close and protested the government's interference. Uh, within the church, and um, the church still stands. And there was churches that uh, remained closed to try to, to keep people safe, and those churches still stand. And America still survived. Um, and while a lot of people died, um, we as a society continued on. And so no matter what happens here, be led by the Spirit, be led by God, and as Christians, we have ultimate faith and trust 
that he is sovereign. He's going to see us through that. This isn't our church. It's God's church. This isn't our lives. It's God's life. And ultimately he isn't, he's sovereign in control. And no matter what happens here, we're going to be okay. Love you guys. God bless. I hope this message finds you well. Um, would love to hear from you.